Hi! Welcome to episode 424 of The Corner of Knit and Tea. My name is Laura. I'm also known as Fluffy Kira on Instagram and Twitter. I blog over at thecornerofknitandtea.com, and that's where this episode and every episode show notes will be. I have an Etsy shop called The Corner of Knit and Tea where I sell my hand spun yarn and knitting patterns. And hi, how are you? It is Monday, May 22nd, and it is a beautiful day in the Midwest here. It is about 75, 80 degrees, a little breezy. It is absolutely lovely, um, and I hope that you are having a good week so far. It's Monday here. I'm coming to you from just outside of Kansas City. Um, I'm in the suburbs on the Kansas side, and so we are smack dab in the middle of the Midwest, and we are enjoying some lovely spring turning into summer weather. We had a lot of rain last week so everything's still very green and budding and um, it's just it's really really nice. So how are you doing? I hope that you're doing well, that you're staying healthy. Um, I know there have been lots of graduations and end of school year celebrations and um, time moves on doesn't it? <laughs> So this past weekend was pretty easy for us. Um, we just hung out mostly. I did a little bit of exercising. I did lots of knitting, a little bit of spinning. So I have lots to show and share with you. And I am getting excited for the upcoming Memorial Day weekend. Um, next Monday will actually be a holiday here in the States. And so it is a three day holiday weekend. Um, and my husband is actually gonna be out of town for most of it. So um, he'll be leaving on Thursday. He's going to be riding his bike with friends. And so I'm I'm going to be on my own for four or five days, which is just fine by me. I have lots of knitting plans. I'll talk about those a little bit further in the episode. Um, and so yeah, I'm just enjoying some time to be crafty. And here Memorial Day always kind of signifies the kickoff of summer, even though it's not quite technically summer yet. Um, so I'm just kind of getting into the um, warm weather vibes. And again, that will be reflected in what I want to work on this coming weekend. So today I am drinking peach Bellini tea. It is from um, Republic of Tea. It is relatively new. I got a sample of it in one of their catalogs. If you like tea and you like Republic of Tea, totally sign up for their catalogs because every so often they throw a um, tea bag sample in there. And that is actually how I got this one. And it is delicious. Um, I oftentimes oftentimes find peach teas are not quite to my liking. Whatever the flavor is, it's not really fully peach. This is lovely peach. Um, and it says black tea, natural peach, apricot, vanilla cream, and champagne flavors, organic bunk fruit, and peach bits. So it is lovely and um, not super expensive. This is in tea bags as opposed to loose leaf tea. This one doesn't happen to come in loose leaf tea, um, but I enjoy these. And so I am drinking that today in my uh, Wizard of Oz mug. Wizard of Oz is a big thing here in Kansas. Um, the book is by Frank L. Baum. If you are not familiar with it, um, it was a musical in the, oh goodness, uh, 40s, 50s? 50s, 60s, I cannot remember, um, with Judy Garland starring as Dorothy and a star-studded cast. It is really, really um, kind of a fun but very Kansas-based um, musical, and uh, I love this mug. It says, it's of Toto, and it says, Dear Dorothy, uh, hey Dawes, took the shoes, find your own way home. So it, it is my fun Kansas mug. And that's a little bit of black tea for an afternoon pick-me-up, and that is just lovely. I added a little bit of sweetener, but it is kind of sweet. So let's talk about knitting. I managed to meet most of my goals for the week, I suppose. Um, let's talk about the first thing I'm working on, which is a test knit of a sweater that I'm knitting for Roxy. Um, it is called Little Nydia Cardigan, and it is by Vanessa Smith. It is based on her other Nydia patterns. The first was a cropped pullover in adult sizes. The second was a cardigan in adult sizes, and actually there is a third. I'm not sure if she's released it yet, but she did a hat pattern with the um, same stitch pattern. So I am working on the, um, it's called Little because it is for girls, so it is sizes, I believe, leave about, uh, I wish I had gone and looked. I want to say maybe six months all the way up to 12 years. I am knitting 10, the 10 to 12 size for Roxy, who will be 10 in the fall. And I have been knitting it in um, Malabrigo, 
uh, Rios, which is their DK weight in Reflecting Pool, which is this lovely teal color. Um, and so I have finished the body, which was my goal for um, this past week. So um, I had hoped to maybe get started on the sleeves, but I ended up having something else to work on. So, um, and I will show you that in a bit, um, but I finished the body. So I, um, this is a top-down raglan cardigan with a really nice lace patterning. And um, the body is finished and ready to go. And now it is time to add sleeves. And if it looks a little bit big, it's because yes, 10 to 12 is almost an adult extra small and it is really people sized. Um, and this hasn't been too onerous. I've only been working on this since the beginning of the month. It hasn't gotten all of my attention, um, but uh, it is a very much a people sized cardigan like adult sized as opposed to when I'm knitting child sizes and it's like so fun because it knits up like that. Um, they are now getting to this stage where they are are more full-fledged people um, and so there's more knitting because um, this sweater is supposed to take right around a thousand yards of uh, yarn which uh, is not too far off from what I used for some of my sweaters. So um, yeah. So again, I'm knitting the 10 to 12 size and um, it needs sleeves and then it needs button bands and then it will be done. So um, I didn't do badly. My hope is that I'll get at least one sleeve done this week. Um, I might not get both done by the time I talk to you next, um, in part because I have some other projects in mind for the holiday weekend. Um, but my plan is to work on this for the next several nights and hopefully get at least one sleeve done um, so I can finish the final sleeve and button bands kind of that very last couple days of May um, beginning of June. I have until June 15th to finish this test knit, but I do also need to start working on a sweater for her brother for his birthday, which is a week before hers. Um, and so I started with the bigger sweater, thinking that would give me the smaller sweater to do after, and also because it fit in the timeline of this test knit. So the pattern should be available, my guess is late June, early July, if it is something you are interested in. Um, the pattern is impeccably written. So far, I have found no mistakes. Um, and uh, the only... Um, slight difference is I didn't knit the body. I didn't knit quite as many repeats on the body as it suggested, and that is because my gauge is a little bit off. Um, uh, my stitch gauge is right on, but my row gauge is a little bit off, and I don't think it will be that much of a problem for the um, raglan sleeves, although that is a concern, um, but she will have some room to grow into this, but I did not want to... Um, I already made the body just a smidge longer than it called for, and I was still just a couple repeats short of what was suggested in the pattern. Um, but that is one of the nice things about knitting. Um, as you, knitting top down, you can kind of decide where you want to be. Um, and so I finished it, and um, this pattern has really lots of sweet details, including the um, lateral braid that kind of separates the ribbing section from the lacy section. It's got this really nice all over lace pattern, except for the raglan stripes, and then down at at the bottom we echo that um that lateral braid again before you go into the ribbing for um the bottom of the sweater so yeah literally two sleeves and some button bands and i'm good and um my shipping tracker shows that the buttons are going to arrive today so i will show you those next week um hopefully when i have one sleeve done and one sleeve to go and actually if i get really ambitious i might go ahead and put the button bands on um this week and then i'll just have one sleeve left to go so that is what I'm working on. Again, that is the Little Nydia Cardian by Vanessa Smith Designs. If you are interested in adult sizes, it's already available on Ravelry, um, both as a cardigan and as a pullover, um, and it uses a DK weight yarn. So that is project number one. Project number two is a shawl that I have been working on. And unfortunately, I don't have as much progress as I had hoped to have um, because I ended up having to rip and start again. I um, have spent the last couple episodes detailing quite a bit how I'm knitting this because um, I'm adding in some things that... Um, I, I'm knitting it right-handed as opposed to left-handed, and I talk a lot about that. Um, and what I realized was that I wanted to add in, I wanted to enlarge this wrap a little bit, and the math of the um, wrap, or the math of the shawl, was not quite working out to add in as many stripes as I wanted, so I ended up pulling back and starting each stripe a little bit sooner so that I can hopefully get more in. Um, and there were lots of math considerations for that, not all of which I'll discuss because that would kind of give away the pattern. Um, it 
is a paid for pattern. So I am working on Around the Corner and um, Around Every Corner, sorry, and it is by Stephanie Lotvin, who is Telly Bean Knits. Um, and it is a fun, um, it almost looks a little bit like a log cabin quilt square except you're only knitting the triangle. It is garter stitch and it uh, was originally knit with six gradient skeins in six different colors from pink to red. Um, and I am knitting it with a larger gradient skein from um, Zen Yarn Garden, which isn't like separated into mini skeins. And then I am using a neutral as a background color. Um, so the neutral that I'm using literally is natural. And this is a Zen Yarn Garden super fine glitter, which is a super fine fingering base. It is 90% superwash merino and um 20 sorry 10 percent I can math 10 percent Stellina nylon and you can kind of see a little bit of the sparkle in here it has um a good sparkle without being too incredibly obnoxious it's just a very thin kind of silver sparkle and I don't know how much you can see it on the natural you can usually see it better on the colors I am also using a gradient skein <clears throat> which is 170 grams 680 yards um and I don't know the colorway I'll have to look and see if they put this one up I didn't see it up the last time but it goes from kind of a teal um into a kind of um cornflower blue or navy blue into a purple and then into a yellow and um as you can see I am into the purple now I am just out of the blue and into the purple and I would love to get part way through the yellow um I do not anticipate that I will get more than halfway through the gradient on the shawl um and that is because there just isn't enough real estate to get into it um but my hope is that by some adjusting I will get further into the yellow and be able to kind of get all the way through the colors so without further ado here is where I am at so this is the shawl and I showed it to you last week. I don't know if I had two or three stripes and I got all the way up through four stripes and I was starting the fifth one and then I thought, oh, I think I've erred. I probably shouldn't have knitted as the pattern was written. I probably should have made some adjustments and I had to sit and have a think on it with the math um, because basically this is in Tarja and you are knitting these um, almost, like I said, like log cabin stripes and you just start a little further along with each one and the question was how many stitches should I... Um, um, work here in the white color before actually going into the gradient stripe and I had to sort of account for the fact that because it's an ever-growing triangle you're increasing stitches but I also still wanted to be able to get enough in before we get to the middle of the quilt because other the middle of the quilt the middle of the shawl because the whole pattern is to kind of try and get the um get those stripes in there a little bit like a log cabin quilt. So it's a little hard to see with the light, but up here, up at the top, it's very blue green. And then there is that darker blue that we were talking about. And now I am going into the purple. You can see just a little bit of the purple on there. And so the shawl originally calls for six stripes. And as you can see, I'm on the fifth right now. And my concern was that I would not um, get halfway through that gradient. And I really wanted to use at least half the gradient. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and work on that and hopefully get a few more. I don't know if I will get as I would love like eight or ten. Um, I don't know exactly how far I'll get. We'll just have to see. Um, it Like I said, it's just a math question and I don't want to start too close to the center because I still want to preserve that little bit um, of an arc there. So this is what it looks like. It is squishy garter stitch. It's going to be lovely to wear and you can see um, a little bit of that sparkle, um, I hope, on the gradient. Let's see if I can get that a little bit closer. Yeah, you might be able to see it. It's a little hard because I know it's also um, showing a little bit of white through there, so it's a little hard. But there are lots of little sparkly bits on there and I think this is going to be a really fun shawl. And actually, it is blowing it out a little bit, but when I hold it this close, you can kind of see that it's very green and teal up at the top and then more teal and then um, goes through that blue and then there's actually some little flashes of yellow right before it goes into the purple so I think the yellow will come in nicely after the purple. So my plan is to hopefully get halfway through the gradient and then I have to decide how I want to finish. Um, the shawl itself finishes with a large band of white um, at the edge and the other thing that I thought just so we could use more of the gradient and because I like bigger shawls is I could actually do like a band of the white and then I could do a larger band of the gradient at the end. So I may do that. I will take notes of any modifications that I made on my page, so if it's something you're interested in doing with yours. Ultimately, these will be kits. Um, I am going to be very careful in my notes 
um, to write the notes in such a way that you will have to buy the original pattern to be able to use my notes to make the one like I made. So um, definitely all credit work credit is due, who is Stephanie Lotvin Telly Bean Knits. She designed this pattern. And I am just modding it a little bit so that I can use more of my beautiful gradient yarn um, throughout the process. So that is kind of what um, what I'm doing so far. And like I said, I had to rip and re-knit, but I'm very excited and I think I'm well on my way now. Um, and so I'm really ready to kind of... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That one just looked a little more square for some reason and I thought, oh goodness, did I mess that up? But I don't think I did. So that is the other project that I am working on. So I will continue to work on these throughout the week. However, um, originally I thought maybe what I would do over Memorial Day weekend is I would work on my first quilt. Um, however, last week I took my sewing machine in for some repairs because it wasn't quite sewing quite right. And they told me it's gonna be three to four weeks before I get the machine back, which means I'm not gonna have my machine back for this weekend. So I decided because my husband's going out of town because it's a holiday weekend, because I will have lots of free time to myself in which I will probably sit and watch movies, Netflix, you know, um, knit, I decided that I wanted to start a new project for myself. And um, while I have a bunch of projects in progress and things that need to be ripped and rethought, I decided that one of the things that I would really like to cast on, particularly as the weather changes, is a new top or tee. And I have two patterns that I'm considering, and I have yarn now for both of them. Um, and so the first one is uh, called the Dawn Top, and it was designed by, her first name is Aner, I do not know how to pronounce her last name, um, but she goes by Mama's Teddy Bear, both in design design name and on Instagram. And recently she posted a picture. It is a halter tank. Um, it, it She posted it, um, so the original pattern I think is mostly cropped, um, but she posted a version on her Instagram of an A-line tank. I think it was in white yarn. Um, and it's a pretty simple halter tank and it's got some simple lines on there. Um, and the lines are created with eyelets. And um, it's very, uh, the eyelets are not big enough to really see through, so it is definitely something you could wear as a summer top. She also suggested you could do it tunic length or you could even make it a dress. And I haven't decided precisely what I want to do yet, but um, it is written for sport weight cotton. And I have that whole mess of cotton, <laughs> Rowan Cotton Glacé, that I ordered a couple years ago to do the Oyster Cardigan that I ultimately frogged. And um, the purple is a great color, it's a good color on me, um, and so I decided I think I want to try making this halter tank and then maybe even making it tunic length um, using that um, Rowan uh, cotton. So I do need to swatch with that, but that is one of the one of the tops um, up for consideration. The second top that's up for consideration, and please um, excuse the plastic, is my friend Christine, who is Treasure Goddess Yarns, and I have used her yarns on here before, um, and I'm going to show you her label. This is her label. Um, Treasure Goddess Yarns, and this is, um, she just decided, normally she dyes plant fibers, and so she acid dyes, and she decided in time for the summer season that she was going to order some um, bamboo linen yarn, because she wanted something for summer tops, and she was going to turn over her dyeing studio and spend a month or two dyeing um, plant fibers, and so this is the result. It is her um, bamboo linen treasures. It's 70% bamboo, 30% linen, fingering weight on 100 grams, 437 yards. And um, she sent me a little sample of um, Coral Reef, which is this really great kind of coral color, pinky orange, um, absolutely lovely. And um, I ended up ordering enough to make myself a top. And so that would be the other top for consideration this weekend. Um, and the top that I'm thinking about knitting is called I don't know how it's pronounced. It's either Este or Este, E-S-T-E, -E, which I use, I, I know could mean East, but I'm not really sure um, if that's what it means in um, the designer's language. The designer's language being, I think, Polish. Um, it is a pattern by Justina Lorkowska, and it is for a simple um, kind of boxy tee, and then it's got um, a lace decorative, um, a, a lacy decorative panel right here on the shoulder. Um, it's just kind of some, um, it almost is like a zigzag triangular hard to explain, but it's like a zigzag um, panel right here on the sleeves. Um, and so that is what I am thinking about doing. 
um, for the for the second potential design. Now I will likely only cast on one of these and um, my hope is that I can get fairly far into it but I'm not even sure that I will finish it. I just sort of wanted to take the weekend to do something fun for myself um, and come up with maybe a new top for the spring. So um, that's what I will be doing this coming weekend. I will podcast on Monday as normal. Um, I'll have the day off work so I'll probably podcast midday and um, I'll get that up for Monday evening as usual so that you can see what I chose and what I'm up to and what progress I have made on my other um, projects. So let me take a sip of tea. We'll do spinning, which will be very quick, um, and then we can um, move on. So I do have a finished spin to share with you today. This is Night Owl. And it is a Targi Viscose Silk Blend from Hello Yarn. Um, I have been working on this for the last couple weeks. I'm trying to get you the best colors. That's probably almost the closest, although I have taken some photos and I will be adding those. Remember, this was a braid that had um, purples and oranges and then lots of little bits of colors like yellow and pink and... Um, and uh, kind of a murky green, and it was done in uh, the bamboo and the silk give it kind of a um, almost frosted look. So what I got was a very fall colors look. Let's see if I can, you can kind of see these. It's the camera's blowing it out a little bit. I'll have to, I'll have to figure out better lighting now that I'm gonna sit from here and record. But um, this is what it is, and I actually weighed it and measured it already, and it is 354 yards, 117 grams, 4.1 ounces. So that's gonna be between a sport and a DK weight, and it is squishy because Tarhi likes to fluff up. This is a really lovely skein. It would make really nice socks. There should be enough here to do um, like nice uh, sport to DK weight weight socks. It also would make a lovely shawlette or winter accessories. Um, it is probably enough to do a baby knit if you wanted to, although it is not super wash, so um, you would have to um, you would have to make sure that whoever you're giving it to understands care. Um, it would be great to combine with other colors in a larger project, um, but it is a fun skein and that is going to be in the shop hopefully by the time you see this video. I already took the photos. I'm trying to get ahead here um, and so if this skein interests you it will be heading into the shop this afternoon um, and by the time you watch this video it will likely be there for you. So that brings me to this week. I went ahead and um, started spinning my my latest club from Northbound Knitting, although it came several weeks ago and I just got the shipping notice today for the next installment. So this was probably May's installment, maybe April. I don't know exactly how she counts it. I signed up for three months um, and this is a Polworth silk and it is um, mostly white and then it has bits and pieces of other things. It's got some purple, it's got some orange, it's got some dark blue, um, and it's got like a little bit of brown or almost um, dark black in there, a little bit, like I said, of russet oranges. Um, it is a very, very neutral braid. It is spinning up nicely. I've spun up about an ounce of it and it's coming out very, very speckled. I mean, when it's dyed, it doesn't exactly look speckled because there are um, lots of spots here, but in the spinning, it comes out with just a bit of color here or a bit of color there. And the overall um, look of it is that the skein is mostly white. So this is uh, the first two ounces is on the wheel. This is the second two ounces. I hope to finish this this week um, and to show it to you next week when I come back and chat with you. And this will also go in the shop. Um, again, this is Polworth silk, so it's going to fluff up. It's going to be super soft. And you can see that the silk is not super well blended in, so it will add bits of shine in there and it will look a little bit different um, depending on where it is in the braid. So I think that's all I have for you this week. I hope that you are doing well. I hope that you're staying healthy. You're finding fun things to craft. Um, if you are in the Northern Hemisphere, are you starting to craft for summer seasons? I'm thinking about it and all I want to craft now is like small um, lightweight tees and I know I still have some larger sweaters to work on, um, but I am definitely uh, switching to slightly lighter weight knits. The other thing that I just thought of this week um, is that Tour de Fleece is almost around the corner. I double checked, it starts on July 1st, so we have about six weeks until that starts. Um, do you guys want to do a team again this year? I hadn't decided yet. Um, I'm leaning towards yes, but I wanted to see if anyone else was interested. Um, again, I'll probably do it kind of how I've done it 
the last couple of years, which is I officially registered the team on Ravelry. I open a chat thread on Ravelry, but there is also a Facebook group and you can use the hashtag on Instagram and I check all three and award prizes um, when I award them from all three audiences. So if you want to be on the team, you are a member of the team no matter where you participate um, and you actually do not have to participate anywhere. It's just that the more you participate, um, I draw random number generator prizes from people who cheer people on, post photos, those kinds of things. So um, let me know if you're interested in that this year because my guess is I will be working in the next couple of weeks to set that up if we're going to move forward with that. I'm looking forward to the Tour de France. I know a lot of you probably don't watch the tour, you just spin, but for me that is kind of a uh, fun summer activity and my guess is it's going to go from the first through I think it's 22 days plus two rest days, so probably the 24th or somewhere around there. I'll have to I'll have to pull up the actual dates, um, but start thinking about what you might like to spin because that's coming up on July 1st. So I hope that you are doing well, and I will say, as I say every week, um, until I see you next time, happy knitting, happy spinning, happy sipping, and I'll see you next week. Bye.